Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in today's second video. We're going to have a look at the ECM to FX standing model for today's second video. This is your 30 day slash six weeks European outlook <laughs> for the UK and for the rest of Europe as well. I shall get on that for you in a second. Just say that the first video you see was our 7 a.m. upload. Uh, and of course, it was released at 6 a.m. today because we've got a lot of warnings and severe weather um, today, uh, courtesy of Storm Barra. So uh, check out uh, that video if you have not yet done so. Um, we've got a 10 to 14 day with all of red features as well as the latest Christmas update coming up for you uh, through the course of today. So just keep checking back to the channel. The videos will be appearing. We like a convey about just knocking them out. <laughs> Um, today, yet again. Thank you so much, uh, everybody. Thank you so much to e7.int for supplying the charts. Also, right, we'll do it to then, shall we? So we're going to begin. So sorry, everybody. I shouldn't be getting on a Tuesday. We're going to begin with the um, mean sea level pressure anomaly for week one. Mr. Tang is through the current week. It's going to be the uh, 6th through to the 13th of December. It's gone again. It's gone again. It's gone again. Uh, right, OK, let's get serious. with low pressure moving in from off the Atlantic into northern and western Europe. High pressure is across Canada. <laughs> and across the piece of parts of Europe. I'm so sorry, everybody. Uh, this area of low pressure is digging down into southern and eastern parts of Europe. My forecast is falling apart. High pressure is pulling out into the Atlantic like that. And we're sending a jet stream on a northwest southeast uh, alignment as well. Now, this high pressure in Scandinavia. Has got a lot of cold air associated with it. That's trying to bring in very cold easterlies from the Urals. And generally, it's quite a cool scene, I think, across most parts of Europe um, with a low pressure digging in from off the North Atlantic. This is how the 500 millibar high dome looks from North Pole and Arctic view down with below average heights into the north and the west of Europe, above average heights up here across eastern and northeast parts of Europe and uh, also out in the Atlantic. You see the northwest southeast alignment of a jet stream like that. So, temperature and Normally, it's looking like they're still very cold across much of Scandinavia and uh, northeastern Europe. Those temperature anomalies are going to 10 degrees or more below average there across northern and northeastern parts of Europe. So, northern Scandinavia, Latvia, Estonia, um, you know, Lithuania, very, very cold in those areas, extending into parts of Finland as well. Generally, quite cold across the northwest Europe, too. So, Ireland and the UK looking pretty chilly. These cold temperatures are extending down the eastern side of Europe as well. So, it looks pretty cold uh, through, uh, through Poland, for example, and into eastern parts of Ukraine. Although, the extreme east and southeast of Europe, from southwest of Russia down the Black Sea towards Greece and Turkey, there, it's mild and average. And much of France. Spain and Portugal coming out milder than average too. Uh, temperature wise, look like that's a f uh, this a three way split. So uh, above our temperature in Spain and Portugal, colder than average through the central bowl of the Med, particularly around Italy, Corsica, and Sardinia. And then it gets warmer again, milder again as we go out to Greece and Turkey. Balkans looking a little bit on the uh, cool side as well. And temperature-wise, week one, uh, current week looked like that. So uh, it's driest in the north. We've got high pressure around Scandinavia and back into northern uh, northeast parts. It's not completely dry, though. There is a little bit of precipitation coming through. Of course, that's going to be snow, as it is so very, very cold. Mostly dry through uh, these uh, central parts of Europe, so from, like, eastern Germany in towards western Poland. Dry through there. Then wetter down here, uh, that'll be a mix of rain and sleet and snow, depending on, you know, where you are, of course, in Greece and Turkey, primarily uh, rain except for mountainous areas. But go further north of Black Sea, you probably running run into some snow. Um, some parts of Spain and Portugal mostly dry. Northern Spain and Portugal looking very wet uh, into the Med. So it's dry through the Balearic Islands, but it does get wetter through, uh, through Corsica, Sardinia and in towards Italy. I mean, going north was wet through much of France and that wet weather extends into Ireland and the UK as well. So a lot of variation uh, going on. Right, so that's week one. Let's go through to week two. This will be the 13th to the 20th of December. See how that one's looking. So now we go very mild, very much wider, I would have thought, across north and western 
Uh, Europe. We have this big area of high pressure then setting up from the southwest to the northeast and back into western parts of Russia. That's probably like the Siberian high ridging towards the Azores side, to be honest. So large ridges forming across many parts of Europe. We have got some lower pressure here in far southeast of Europe and uh, plenty of low pressure in the North Atlantic. And that's going to combine with the uh, high pressure over much of Europe to bring in very mild west or southwest winds into the far north and west of Europe. The 500 millibar height anomaly should show this up quite nicely as well. So again, lots of below average heights, not heights, lots of low pressure around here, above average heights through there and going uh, eastwards as well. Most parts of Europe under high pressure, but out to the northwest, we're dragging in those very mild winds from off the Atlantic. It should be a much milder week for much of western northwest Europe. Let's have a look. There we go. We go significantly above average river temperature in nearly all areas, to be honest. Even like under the centre, I'm a little bit dubious about that. Because in the centre of the high pressure, you're probably going to get inversions going on over the continent. So, you, so you'll get frost and fog. But the model is not really able to pick up on that low level sort of cold. The model will be looking at the upper air temperature parameters and, and assuming that what you have on, in the upper air temperatures, what you have on the surface but of course for like central germany and poland where you're stuck under that big area of high pressure even if it's mild aloft it will probably turn uh, very much colder down on the surface through frost and fog the model may pick up on that you know uh, next week but at the moment it's forecast like widespread mild temperature so reduce those temperatures really if you're in the center of high let's go back here so these sort of areas are under the center of that high pressure germany poland towards ukraine um, you know, these areas just here, probably up there as well, um, are going to be a lot colder than that uh, than that temperature anomaly is showing. Out to the northwest, it's fine though. So for Scandinavia, for the UK, for Ireland, you know, for Denmark, the Low Countries, northern uh, northern uh, France in particular, that area just there is going to be very mild. I would have thought with those southwesterly winds, or much milder anyway, with those southwesterly southwesterly winds down into the Mediterranean. We look like this. Um, so generally, generally above average temperatures, really for most parts uh, of the Med, a little bit cooler down here. Perhaps precipitation-wise, it should go a lot drier in most areas, and we see it. So uh, where we've got those southwest winds, they're still bringing rain. And, of course, the northern Scandinavia in particular, there will be snow involved in that. Um, so, wet in the extreme north and northwest. Otherwise, so under the area of high pressure, will be lots of dry weather all the way from Spain, Portugal, right way over to Black Sea. And the west of Russia comes out significantly uh, drier than normal. Week 3 is going to be the 20th, 27th of December through the uh, Christmas period. And uh, we find the high pressure going northwards and becoming centred over the UK and much of northwest Europe. It should start to pull colder air back in from the east across more sort of eastern and uh, some central western parts of Europe. So like France, probably some Germany, uh, and then going northeast. Which I would have thought we started bringing some easterly influences that will be cold. And even under the centre of the high, of course, over the UK, for example, and Denmark, um, and the low countries, even where we're centering high pressure, it will probably start to turn colder from uh, inversion through, through frost and fog uh, as well. We have got some lower pressure down here, just going to the extreme southwest, and also over here uh, into the far eastern part of the Med, perhaps. The uh, precipitation, the 500 millibar height anomaly, I should say what I'm talking about, uh, looks like that. So again, the above average height side west centre, because most northern central west parts of Europe around that, I would always start bringing something a little bit colder. Uh, to those northeastern and some central parts of Europe. Lower pressure uh, down here, perhaps. Let's have a look at the temperature anomaly. Yes, it is cooling down significantly across much of uh, Europe. Still mild on average through Scandinavia into Scotland and Ireland from uh, winds again still coming in from southwest. But look how much cooler it is, colder even, it is across most parts uh, of Europe, right way from sort of southern England, northern France, uh, all the way towards the Black Sea. It's cold now. And even into central uh, part of Med through Mediterranean, generally below average temperatures through there. Precipitation-wise, in week three, very dry scene in uh, most areas under that area of high pressure, so from Ireland, uh, UK and France, Spain, Portugal in the west, right way over to West Russia in the east, drier than normal. Could be a bit showery through the central bowl of them and uh, northern Scandinavia, uh, like Norway in particular, and northern parts of uh, Sweden, looks more unsettled there, still with winds coming in from the Norwegian uh, sea. Of course, that will be mostly snow. 
Right, week four is going to be the 27th of December to the 3rd of January. Where's that high pressure going? Let's have a look. There it is. So, high pressure still in control of weather, still centred more or less over slightly to the east of the uh, UK. So, somewhere between around um, sort of Scotland and Denmark, really centering that area of high pressure. Where it looks like the ridge is extending an influence across much of Europe, really. I would have thought, again, probably quite cold through many uh, many areas as, as we see, uh, you know, cold air coming around area of high pressure. 500 millibar high to normally looks like that. Again, it's indicative of high pressure being in control here. It is trying to reach its way towards Scandinavia, but I think, kind of say, it's probably like through France, Germany, um, Poland, those sort of areas. We'll see in a moment with temperature anomaly. Here it is for week four. Um, so it's still a little bit mild. Actually, further out again, the week of the signal is getting. Uh, so it's still mild average across much of northern uh, Scandinavia and Iceland and into Greenland, but bear in mind. You know, these are anomalies to average you a long way north up there. So even if it's what's on the scale, it's like one, uh, zero, 20 degrees above average or, or like one or two degrees above average. Even with that, though, we'll be very, very cold up there. Most parts of Europe are still looking cold, really. I think average to cold uh, through most parts of Europe. The signal's weakened a little bit because it's gone further out. But I think that New Year period is probably still quite a cold uh, period. But precipitation anomaly, again, it's getting weaker because it's going further out. Most areas are still looking relatively dry, though, especially across the west of Europe where you have that high pressure uh, centre. Maybe looking more and more unsettled with time through the Mediterranean. Right, so that's the 38. Look ahead. Let's just stick to about weeks 5 and 6. Uh, because why not? The data's there, so we might as well have a look at it. See what it shows. So week 5 will be the 3rd through to the 10th of January. High pressure goes on. So this is a very prolonged area of high pressure, isn't it? Across much of northern and western Europe. You would have thought still kind of bringing in winds from the east. A true classic Siberian easterly all the way from the Urals. You've got to get the high pressure a bit further north. That high pressure centres around there. That's about perfect then. Just to the north of the Baltic Sea. And that will really pull in. You know, those, those very long fetch easterly winds, especially if it's combined with low pressure around Italy. Um, so it's not perfect for like a long fetch easterly. Nevertheless, of course, it's, it's like three weeks now of high pressure here across northern and western Europe. And uh, so it, it, it will be cold, you know, across much of the north and the west of Europe under that area of high pressure. We have got some lower pressure coming in through here. Maybe a little bit indicative of like a negative LEO type pattern setting. I mean, of course, it's five weeks away, so that high pressure could be further northwards than that. So let's just put in uh, a question mark, shall we? The 500 millibar height, and it looks like that. So again, uh, very much dominated by high pressure across the north and the west of Europe. The temperature anomaly for week five looking like this. So uh, mild up here or mild on average around there. Uh, generally quite cold though through much of France, for example, to Germany. You know, it's weakening terms was going further out. But overall, I think much of Western Europe could probably expect to still be quite cold there into early January with that area of high pressure. And again, um, you know, it was pretty dry where that high pressure is dominating across the north and the west of Europe in particular. Week 6 will be the 10th to the 17th of January. Where does high pressure go then? Um, so we've got some high pressure moving over towards the eastern side of uh, Europe and still with high centred over the UK. It's a very weak signal by this point, I have to say. So maybe the high has been to break down by the middle of January. Although the 500 millibar high to normally still has it firmly uh, sort of locked in over the UK and the west of Europe, uh, to be honest. The temperature anomaly looks like that. Um, so again, very weak signals. Maybe the coldest temperature anomaly is going over towards the eastern side of uh, Europe. And the precipitation anomaly, again, very weak signal, probably dry so across the west of Europe. But of course, we're six weeks away. We're into the middle of January by that point, so it is very, very speculative. And we're going to wait and see where that high pressure is going, don't you? So we're going to get some high pressure building up across uh, many northern uh, and west parts of Europe as we go towards Christmas period and beyond into the new year and early January. Will that high pressure sit there close to the UK and between like UK and Denmark for like three weeks? Or will that high pressure go a little bit further northwards? And if it does, it comes to send over Scandinavia. If it does that, then much of northern Europe will be engulfed in, in like a big freeze. So it, or, the position of that high pressure around Christmas and New Year can be absolutely critical. All to blame for. Uh, therefore, I think, through most parts of Europe over the next few weeks. And we shall see what happens. It's going to be exciting. 
If you enjoyed this video, please smash your like button and just subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. I'm going to be back shortly or a little bit later on, which is 10 to 14 day. That will include all our great features. So come back for that then. Uh, but for this uh, week's European Outlook, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.